Welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Mark Ellis. Welcome one and all to the best movie news show in the entire galaxy. My name is Mark. We are thrilled to bring you guys an intense discussion about cinema. Ashley, you picked up two vagrants on your way into work. They're going to be joining us on the panel. Who are they? I did. Also, here is host of Collider Heroes, John Schnepp. Hey, I'm super happy to be here. Hey, man, did you see the movie Transcendence? <laughs> yeah, I saw that movie. Transcendence, any good? I heard the vil villains, something about villains in there, in it, inside. It could have been better. They just they, they focused too much on the fact that everyone's a bad guy. I don't know that you guys could have delivered that oh better than you did. I mean, the rehearsals yeah. were great, and you guys, when the when the spotlight's the brightest was, is when the solid. S rats shine. That over there is Christian Harloff, host of Jedi Council. And you boys, before you guys got in your weird transcendence funk, <laughs> were able to see the new trailer for La La Land. You guys just did the reaction. It just dropped. It's got Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone from the director of Whiplash. You guys did the reaction that is going to be up on the Quadra YouTube channel shortly. How was it, boys? Well, you should really watch that reaction that we just did. But we loved it. I loved it. I, I loved it as well. I thought that it, what it did perfect for the first, these are, this is the way I want to see movies marketed to where you, a teaser where you go, oh, I don't know what the hell it was, but I'm interested. And the second mm -hmm. one, it's like, I still don't really know what it was, but I'm getting a more clear version of what the movie is as far as tone. Right. Um, it's not going to be for everybody, for sure. It kind of reminds me of a, a, a similar in certain ways to like Moulin Rouge. It, it, like, but it could be like a love letter to Hollywood as yes. well as uh, a romantic uh, just showcase of falling in love. Yeah. It, it felt like, a yeah, the tone of it was great because they showed different clips and scenarios that felt like they were from different films. So it feels like the actors in it are actually cast in some movie and then fall in love in real life. So that's our guess. We don't really know because they don't tell you enough about what the film's about, which is what's exciting about it. And that's what I liked about the trailer is that, like, look, I'm going to say this. I don't think that this movie is going to be for every taste. I think that it's a very artsy looking movie. And for what it is, it looks like it's going to be spectacular. But I agree with you guys is that when you watch the trailer, you know what you're getting in for. You're not going to be misled right. with this film. It's, it's going to be... Uh, you know very very musical based it's going to be clearly a love story and it does look like it takes some artistic chances that paid off in the trailer so i was a fan of watching it for what the trailer was yeah definitely agreed all right then let's move on to our first official topic and for that we go back to ashley mova in an exclusive from Deadline, Paramount Pictures has stopped pre-production on Mission Impossible 6 and won't start up again until the salary is worked out with franchise star Tom Cruise. The studio had hired between 15 to 20 people in London to start the soft pre prep work after writer-director Christopher McQuarrie and Cruise worked out the beats of the new film when the studio told them to stop work immediately. Deadline is hearing split versions with one scenario having the studio looking for Cruise and other producers to trim their feet. The other scenario is that Cruz wants Paramount to match the raise he got from Universal on The Mummy. A release date for MI6 has not been set. Mark, what are your thoughts on Paramount stopping pre-production on MI6, and do you think this will resolve itself? Uh, my thoughts on this particular issue do not reflect my thoughts on most films, but with this one case you pay the man yeah. you pay tom cruise whatever the hell he's asking because this is my bird's eye view of how you start production on mission impossible 6 or any of these movies is that you look at the previous films and you say okay well uh we got him to climb the tallest building in the world and uh, then here he actually hung on to an airplane taking off in previous movies. He's dangled from the side of a cliff with no ropes mm -hmm. or anything. So let's come up with another stunt we can put this poor guy through. Then they're like, oh, yeah, let's have him be hang on to the side of a rocket as we launch it out of her stratosphere. He's willing to do it? Okay, next thing is let's pay him whatever he wants to do. As soon as you lock up whatever crazy stunt he's going to be doing in the next movie, that's what you base it around. And you also, yes, need him to show up on set. So, of course, you pay Tom Cruise because no Nobody else is capable of pulling off a Mission Impossible movie, and nobody else is crazy enough and is that famous enough to do all these insane stunts. So you pay the man. Christian, am I crazy here? You're crazy, but you're right. Um, <laughs> I, I think that uh, you absolutely, from what he has done so far with the Mission Impossible franchise and the fact that he's having this come back with everything that he's done with the action movie he's still in his 50s and he is one of the best action movie stars out there and the Mission Impossible franchise has done very well for them the fact that they want to do this universal franchise and this this monster movie franchise and the fact that you got him is one of the selling points we've been raving about the idea that they're going after this top tier talent well the reason we said oh look they're willing to spend the money to get this top tier talent whatever that raise was on it 
Tom Cruise deserves it on on this movie. It's it's in its sixth sixth, trans, sixth yeah. film now at this point. Yeah, you pay him, give him give him the bump. He doesn't. He's not like one of these guys that's just trying to up his price. He's been in the game for a very long time. He knows what he's worth. So I agree with you. A lot of times, just like okay, just there's another star asking for more money. I think this is a case where he deserves it, um, and I think Universal should pay him. Should that? Yeah. <laughs> That's the sound of dump trucks being backed up into Tom Cruise's <laughs> giant palatial mansions. Uh, yeah, I agree with both of these guys. Do do what you should be doing, which is paying him bucket loads of millions. Because Rogue Nation was better than, uh, what was the fourth one Ghost called? Protocol. Ghost yeah. Protocol, which was better than the third movie. I mean, each Mission Impossible movie has actually gotten better, which I thought was impossible. But I loved Rogue Nation. And I can't wait to see the sixth one. It's got Chris McQuarrie is writing it right now. He's, he's still working on the script. The script isn't even done. They're just doing pre-production. And I, they're freaking out about paying Tom Cruise, the guy who is actually responsible. He's the star of all five of the other franchises. I mean, the other five movies. It's really weird to me. I hope this is just some kind of hiccup and not true and that they start production again tomorrow and Tom Cruise has like $78 million in his bank account or whatever. Like like he needs more money, but just give it to him anyway. I would imagine that this is in the long term going to be viewed as a hiccup. That it's a couple yeah. days when they had to shut down production before they got the money thing right. Because I'm telling you, as soon as the last Mission Impossible movie comes out, you see what it did opening weekend, how big of a movie it is, what the critical response was. You get a bunch of guys in a think tank and they say, what can we make Tom Cruise do next? Because mm -hmm. nobody else out there, Christian mentioned, it doesn't matter that the guy's in his 50s. Is Liam Neeson going to show up and do his own stunts? Right. Is Denzel, Jason Statham, is he really hanging on the side of a building in the mechanic? No, probably not. Tom Cruise is the only guy that's going to do it. So, yes, you have to pay the man his money. And because I stumped so hard for him, maybe I get a cut of that? Yeah, 2%. Yeah, you know, you can't prove that. You know, I'm not, 2 of I just, that I think money. Come on, Christian, give him like 1%. Yeah. I'll take 1%. Percent. What's our next story? <laughs> Director James Gunn took to his Facebook page yesterday to release some new concept art from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 ahead of its debut in the pages of Empire Magazine. The concept art seems to divulge a major action set piece from the film, which shows the team fighting what Gunn called an abelisk. We'll know where this scene fits in when Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 hits theaters on May 5th, 2017. Schnepp, what do you think about the new concept art for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? I absolutely love it. They're like fighting some like dog moon creature from the thing. What I don't know what that thing is, but that's right <laughs> out of a comic book, like where monsters dwell or whatever, but the guardians are fighting it. I absolutely love that image. I love I love baby Groot. Everybody's got a rocket pack. It looks awesome. I don't know what an abelisk is or if it's like I, I doubt it's the end sequence or it's one of the main plot points of the film. It's probably just some cool sequence. Maybe it's the very beginning of the film. Who knows? I love it. How do you get dog moon creature from that picture? That thing looks like it was born. It's at least half octopus. Because uh, I saw the movie The Thing. That's you know, it looks like the the thing creature, like half dog with a bunch of tentacles. All right, fine, Christian. You have not seen the movie The Thing. It's great. You should check it out. Uh, what do you think about this picture? I think it's cool. I think it, it sets exactly the tone that we've got in the first movie. And I, I, at this point, I'm trust in what James Gunn, tr trust in the vision, trust in what they're doing so mm -hmm. far. And and because I got to see all that cool stuff at Comic Con, so totally. this fits into everything. And that you got to give them something kind of bigger to go after. And that certainly is uh, one of those things. Don't you feel like that scene that we saw? comic-con with uh, when you have all the guardians and they're like united again that this might be it could the be thing like leading up to, to it. face yeah. i i and and that's why i go back to schnapp's point where i think this is going to happen earlier in the movie this mm -hmm. doesn't look like the man and uh, the main antagonist in the film i see that and i think first of all this thing needs a huge budget because it's not going to be easy to pull off an effect like that yeah. but man if they can do it then it's just going to make my expectations go even higher for guardians of the galaxy 2. ashley are you a huge fan of that picture the moon um, dog creature um, i like it i don't like the name abelisk though like it oh. doesn't it's not giving me enough of like what it is and we're not familiar Wait, with I, this. I got another name for you jambalisk do you like that better there you go oh really throw a j there in go. there get some of those and high baby tiles. Groot. baby <laughs> Groot is so cute i love baby Groot. you're gonna absolutely fall in love with baby Groot, yeah. as is everybody else once that movie comes out next summer and now we are already on to buy or sell this is the part of the show where ashley's going to give us a topic we'll say whether we buy it or sell it and then some people here might make weird faces what's our first category Hugh Jackman celebrated the official end of filming on the next Wolverine movie with a good old-fashioned shave. The actor posted a video ridding himself of the mutton chops he's sporting in the movie, saying, my wife will be very happy. Jackman has confirmed
confirmed that Wolverine 3 will be his last in the series with the movie rumored to follow the Old Man Logan comic book storyline. The movie is scheduled for release on March 3rd, 2017. Christian Byers said that this is the last time we'll be seeing Jackman as Wolverine. I think I'm going to buy it. I think Ooh. I mean I think I'm going to buy it. I think that he he doesn't like he's been in this thing for so long and been I don't know. It's it's tough. It's tough. But if you came back and said, "Oh, he's going to be in it again," I wouldn't be surprised. But I think he really wants to kick back, and they might want to recast Wolverine down the line. But yeah, I, I think I'm going to buy it. I am going to have to sell it. I think it's the last time you see Wolverine, Hugh Jackman play Wolverine for a while. The reason why I'm selling it is I think down the road somewhere, right. and it might be contingent upon how much we respond to Wolverine this this current incarnation, but. What if there is a great Old Man Logan storyline that you can tell five, ten years from now? And Hugh Jackman's like, yeah, I do want to do that story because Hugh Jackman is, what, in his late 40s or whatever. So right. he's still going to like he's going to keep himself in pretty good shape for the next few decades, I would imagine. Right. So if there is a story that comes along that gets dropped on his desk, that's a really kick ass Old Man Logan take. I think he might be up for that, especially if he's been on Wolverine vacation for a while. Schnepp, which side are you on? Well, I buy it, but also you can never say never again. I mean, look right. at all the Bonds who came back. Look at all the different actors who've come back to roles after they said they'd never do it again. And uh, why not give him that break? It's Hugh Jackman. <clears throat> He's the best Wolverine we've ever had. The only Wolverine we've ever had. So <laughs> maybe we're going to have to have a couple other Wolverines and then be like, get Jackman back. So you never know what will happen, but I buy it for now. So you are still buying it, though, yeah, even I, though you, you want to leave such a window open for I would leave, I leave a total full four open windows, but I completely buy that he's done. All right, I had four buys yesterday. Kick off with a sell. What's up next, Ash? Days, are, days after we got word that Going Places, a rumored spinoff to The Big Lebowski, had already begun filming, the first photo of Totoro back as Bullard Jesus <clears throat> Quintana has now hit the web. Susan Sarandon, who co-stars in the film with Bobby Cannavale and Audrey Tattoo posted the image on Instagram saying, The man John Turturro on location, love you. Turturro has been talking up a Big Lebowski spinoff for quite some time, and Going Places is now essentially a remake of the 1974 French film Les Valsuses, centering on Jesus. No oh. release date has been set. Mark G. Byers saw the first look at Turturro as Jesus in the Big Lebowski spinoff. If it is the Big Lebowski spinoff, I will buy it. I will defer to John Schnepp, who might have a different <laughs> take on whether this is actually the Big Lebowski spinoff. I, I, my only take is the Coen brothers who uh, wrote and directed the Big Lebowski have absolutely nothing to do with this and are, are not signed on as executive producers like Fargo. They have nothing to do with it. So I don't I can't see it as a spinoff and it's not confirmed by anyone. It's just rumored. I mean, his name is uh, Jesus or Jesus. That's the, probably the only connection that this has. So I can't actually agree with anybody who's saying that this is a big Lebowski spinoff. It's just another film that John Turturro is making until I've heard otherwise. But right now, it's just a rumor, and I don't believe it. Christian, John Schnepp is effing with the Jesus. What say you? I'm going to sell it also. I don't, I don't think that it's uh, going to happen. I don't think it should happen. I, I mean, was the Jesus a great character? Very funny. He's a pedophile. I don't want to watch a two-hour movie about a pedophile. No, thank you. Um, but I think that there can be some funny moments if he was to appear <laughs> down the line. I also don't want to see... I don't want to see this movie without the Coen brothers. I just don't want to see it. I, th I think it'll turn into... I just don't want it to... I don't know. I just don't know if I want to follow him around for, for two hours. Right. <laughs> I just love the way you delivered that. <laughs> <laughs> do, do I like the character? Yes. He was a pedophile. <laughs> very, very good. The there were things about the character, for sure. But. No, yeah, yeah it, it is a very in, in, engaging character from one, from one aspect, particularly as an ancillary character in The Big Lebowski. As far as seeing the own movie, I don't know that I can buy it. The reason why I buy this image is because if this is a spinoff of Big Lebowski, we are following that character, it does look like the Jesus. Yeah. So I'm going to buy that image if it, this is indeed the Big Lebowski spinoff. I don't know that anybody's really clamoring for that spinoff, but if it is, it's going to be very interesting to see where that goes. And our next story is... It was over two years ago when we got our first look at Max Steel, the Mattel toy line turned cartoon, turned live action movie featuring Ben Winchell as Max. Now a new trailer has been released signaling the project is still alive. Winchell plays Max McGrath, a teen boy who meets and merges with an alien named Steel to become Max Steel. Max Steel will now hit theaters in the U.S. on October 21st. Schneb, buy or sell the new trailer for Max Steel. <laughs> It's actually Gah! more positive Sell. looking Ash Rat than I saw. Sell. Uh, 
boy, do I sell this hard. What? <laughs> But based on a cartoon toy line from 1997, when did this, whoever played with a Max Steel doll and never even heard of this thing, then I saw this trailer, it's just a bunch of dudes screaming into the sky with lightning bolts and bad outfits. It looks like the Giver done on a, you know, budget with five pieces of cloth and a chapsticks and Which horrible. the actual Giver was done on as <laughs> That's well, right. This but. is like, hey, I got a couple of Giver outfits. You want to put some someone in there? Hey, I don't know. I sell it. At least the guy ever had Mark Hamill going for it. Christian, are you as excited about Schnapp? Oh, I like this fan film. Uh -oh. It was a good uh -oh. fan film. I thought it was a great fan film. I think that it, That's right. Wait, it was fan, right? Yeah. Right. Now it's no, a real, it's now a it's, it's this actually a real wait, trailer. This is oh, then I sell the hell production. out of this dopey thing. It looks so, I I was watching this yesterday in the office, and I start watching it, and, and Riley said, what are you watching? And I was like, I don't know. I forgot halfway through it, and it's only a minute and a half. It looks ridiculous, and it's like we have a Power Rangers movie coming out. Let's let's go with the Power Rangers movie. This is what is this? Who is this? It's a lost Why do we need toy to line. I don't this? even know if they have the toys are available. This anymore. is one of the most worthless trailers I've ever seen. I would have to agree with you guys. Uh, I I don't throw the term gem in the holograms around often, but oh. it sounds like this could be going down that path and for no other reason because gem in the holograms was something that had some fan awareness, but that movie that actually was made was marketed to a different audience than anybody who would have ever heard of gem in the holograms. Right. And I think this is the same kind of thing. Like I'd never heard of Max Steel before. I wasn't aware this was ever a thing. I'm sure most people are probably like us, and if you. You know what? If you guys were aware of Max Steel, let us know. Comment right now and say whether you liked or didn't like this trailer based on the lore that it is steeped in because this trailer did nothing for me. Apparently, did nothing for the S-Rats. And uh, I don't know, Ashley, did you get a chance to watch the Max Steel trailer? I don't Steel even trailer? know what Max Steel is. When was this popular? When like was seven this years ago. Popular? Seven, I don't know. <laughs> this movie seven was seven years, years ago. This movie seven. was made two seven. years ago. It's it's been on the shelf for two years. Oh at least seven. At least seven, seven years. Ago. Seven. Seven, seven years. Seven. Seven. Yeah, Max. It sounds like the name of a character in Magic Mike Six, and uh, I don't think we need to see this movie. Particularly, he's going to be merging with an alien. But Maria Bell and Andy Garcia are in it, huh? Uh, no. Uh, all right, All next right. topic. Deadline is reporting that Zombieland director Ruben Flesher is attached to direct Cops, a feature adaptation of the famous police reality TV series. The idea is to turn it into an edgy narrative feature with a buddy comedy story a la Lethal Weapon. Cameron Fay will write the script with Flesher and David Bernard producing through the district along with Cops rights holder Langley Films' John Langley. A release date has not been set. Christian, buyers sell a Cops adaptation in the vein of Lethal Weapon. Bad boys, bad boys, what, what you gonna, gonna do? do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Can I have you sing that acapella for a second? <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do when, when they come, come for you? And now I will be retiring from life. <laughs> that was life, really? Life. Come on. That was, life. You that got was, a long life wow. ahead of you. I mean, not after that song. I, I, that will haunt me. Oh, what you're, you're going to do? Oh, what, what you're going to do when they come, come for you? you? Cool. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sell that song. But I'll, uh, I, yeah, I still I got to sell this because I don't know. Didn't they do like a spoof in this? Like, they what did. was the spoof that they did in the. Let's Be Cops. Oh no, it was gosh. that show that they had Let's going be on cops for is a while. Great. Uh, oh, cops had, and Monsters? No. Or? They had was, the Steven Seagal where he's no, a real sheriff. No, there was one on Comedy uh, Central for oh, a while. Oh, Reno 911. Yeah. 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 That a girl. That great a girl. Show. Um, that was the show that, to me, I mean, this is in the vein of Lethal Weapon. They're going to do right. cops. I I don't know. Why just, just make a different movie that's in the Why do you call it cops? It's, exactly. I, I, I sell this. You know what was great was the, the cops knockoff that they did in the vein of Star Wars with stormtroopers playing cops. I can't remember. It's a huge YouTube oh, troops. video. It's so Troops. Funny. Kevin Rubio in the house, Kevin ladies Rubio, and gentlemen. Right. He did that. Check that out. He Kevin's launched the actual the modern fan film. It is so funny. This, on the other hand, I, yeah, I, I agree with Christian. I don't understand why you call it cops. Why, if you want to make a new buddy cop, which I think I'd be up for. I think we would all be up for like yeah. a new version of something that feels like Lethal Weapon. Right. But why would you limit yourself to cops? Why would you go back to that? I mean, you can already put the song that Shep and I covered so faithfully. Amazingly well. good. Really you good. can put that in the movie as a joke. Yeah. Like, like, but you don't have to call the movie right. cops. 
unless they're, it's going to be so focused on that and have a found footage aspect of it. No, so. you know they probably do. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know what the rules are anyway. But if, the fact that they have the rights, maybe they can take actual stories that had come through some of the files. But isn't that public anyway? You can do that I, anyway. Yeah, it anyway, right? It, it, it seems like the only reason to do it and call it cops would be to make it a total spoof of cops. But they're not. Which, which is yeah. you. You said was was so brilliantly done yeah. by the Reno Nine One One. And end of watch. And We've already had great like right. found footage kind of style films made in the vein of cops. That's what I was thinking. Is there a way? So I, I'm going to sell this for right now. <laughs> Shep, is there a way that you can do end of watch but make it a little funnier and less heavy? I guess they, that yes, they're going to call it cops. That's what <laughs> I, you know why they're doing it. It's just yeah. nostalgia branding. I mean, they're like, hey, didn't it wasn't that a popular show for like eight, seven, nine years? We all watched it a couple times. Um, yeah, I mean that's it. Just it's just a branding thing. They're like, hey, if they get that song, the Bad Boy song, and they have that cops logo with the sirens and stuff, and they just, you know, I don't know if it's a good idea. Actually, I do. I think it's a horrible idea. I do know that. Um, so I sell it. I sell the idea of of rebranding what was a, a an interesting reality TV series, and then trying to do something totally different with it, kind of polluting the actual original idea of what the show was. So. I agree. Now that we got down this toy, we need to get some positivity back on this show. And for that, I'll go high, you go low. Christian, give me some mid-range. <clears throat> bad boys, bad, bad boys. boys. What, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, gonna do when they come no, for you? Well, I said mid-range. Oh, sorry. <sighs> now we'll turn it over to Miss Wendy Lee, who's been monitoring you guys in the chat room all day. Who's monitoring us? Here, absolutely <laughs> no nobody. One. They have the cattle prods ready as soon as this show ends. <laughs> Wendy, let's go back uh, to our two top stories. So let's talk about the Mission Impossible uh, halting production because of Tom Cruise's pay and then that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 image featuring a moon dog. What are the kids saying? Well, somebody says, I hate Mark Ellis and his effing temper tantrums. Let me tell you, buddy, leave Mark Ellis alone. I probably have the most temper tantrums right now. I didn't have a temper tantrum. Exactly. I mean, not, I not to leave my Mark Ellis alone. I love right? your temper he's, tantrum. He's, yeah. he's one of my faves. All right, moving on. Mission Impossible <laughs> 6. Uh, halts production over Tom Cruise's pay. AJ McLean says, show me the money. So the chat says, just pay the man, even though some are saying that he already makes enough money. There's no Mission Impossible without Tom Cruise. Mike Oz says, if they decide to not pay Tom Cruise and recast him instead, they will have renamed to rename the series to Mission Maybe. Slightly impossible subtitle. It's definitely possible with Jeremy Renner as E. Hunt. <laughs> 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 and for the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 concept art, the chat agrees that it looks pretty cool and they're all excited for the movie. And I don't know how, but some people are, are already tired of Baby Groot. Uh, Julian Webb says, please uh, release the Kraken. James at Mira Domain says, Baby Groot is going to be so annoying. And Zeno Hour says, this movie is going to be crazy. Oh, wow. Gosh. We don't have to worry about me going on a temper tantrum with that comment. But Ashley Mova, on the other That's hand. That's so rude. It's, you know what that, that is? It's people trying to be against the grain. You know, when something's cool and everybody likes right. it, everyone's like, oh, I'm so different. Groot sucks. Like, no, Groot is cute. Get over it. Actually, Whoa. and yeah. also, you know, you uh, pre-Baby Groot haters who haven't seen the footage. Right. Like, a lot of us who were in Hall H saw that entire scene with Baby Groot. It's amazing. It's cute. It's funny. It's wait till you see it. And then after you've seen the movie, hate all you want. Yeah. It really is going to work, I think, for most people. And then six months after the movie comes out, Baby Groot is going to be under every little kid's Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Ashley, now let's go on to opening this week. It's brought to you by our good friends at AMC Theaters. We're going to tell you a couple movies coming out this very weekend. What do we got? First up is Mechanic Resurrection. When the deceitful actions of a cunning but beautiful woman force him to return to the life he left behind, Arthur Bishop's Jason Statham's life is in danger as he has to complete an impossible list of assassinations of the most dangerous men in the world. Also coming out is South Side with You. Future U.S. President Barack Obama, Parker Sawyers, and lawyer Michelle Robinson, Tika Sumter, go on a fateful first date in the summer of 1989. All right, now look, I, I made fun of uh, the Mechanic Resurrection earlier, just in the vein of that it's not Mission Impossible 6 where right. most of these stunts actually took place. Maybe they did, and either way, I'm very excited to see Mechanic Resurrection for all the wrong reasons. I mean, I, I don't think it looks like an Oscar-winning film, but it could be that late summer action movie that just makes us feel like we're in the early 90s again. Jason Statham is the best version of an early 90s action star that we currently have right now. I haven't seen Jean-Claude Van Johnson 
yet, so don't hold me to that. Right. But I'm a huge fan of watching Statham in movies like this. I think the one issue that fans had with the previous Mechanic film is that it was a little too much drama and not enough action. This one certainly looks like it course corrected enough to make me want to go see it. And then I, I, I was intrigued from the word go with this uh, oh, uh, Barack and Michelle Obama date story where mm -hmm. it's something that sounds so different and original. It, I want to investigate that more and see how faithful it is to what actually happened between those two when they first met. Uh, Schnepp, which of these movies are you going to go see this weekend? Uh, Southside with you, I, I really love the trailers that had this kind of fun uh, innocent approach kind of thing, like two people just getting to know each other, even though we know what happened many years later. So I, I like the way just the trailers laid it out, the way it was directed, and just how they just showed the tone of them meeting each other and the respect that they slowly get, gained for each other. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I would have to actually have seen the first mechanic to care about the second mechanic resurrection, but I heard the first one's really good. Ben Foster's in it. You guys, would you tell me to see the first mechanic? I uh, would, yeah. I'd tell you to see Ben Foster's scenes. Oof, okay. They forget the movies forget. Sure, them. okay. But Jason Statham's an action guy. You like action? Yeah, but I don't. I don't. It's it seems like the same thing over and over again. And I just saw a comment in the uh, chat room. And someone said, "Oh man, Jessica Alba's picking crappy movies." No, she's picking the movies she's offered um, <laughs> because she's not being offered anything anymore because she's not the best actress in the world. And that doesn't get me excited. They're also not screening this movie for critics. That's mm. all. That's always a bad sign. Could there be some fun in it? Yeah, but I'm not expecting anything from that movie. And as far as Southside with you, I'm. Curious. I mean, it's one of those movies that could be a surprise kind of hit, or it could be one that just misses the mark. So um, I think for me, I'm going to go catch up on some movies that I missed out on. I didn't get a chance to see War Dogs, yeah. so I want to go check that out in Kubo, I wanna see, because Dennis and the, and the crew have been really Kubo's raving amazing. about that, yeah. and Schnapp really loves it. So I want to go see Kubo and War Dogs first, and then I'll check out these movies. Uh, Jessica Alba, I believe in Mechanic Resurrection, is is dating Jason Statham. They're like together. No. Uh, oh, in the, right? in the movie. In the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. not in real life. But but I'm saying, it's like, do you guys buy that relationship at all? Do you think that Jason Statham, who's probably 50... Are you going to question my choices? <laughs> Never mind. I wasn't I'll trying to... right in your face. ...upset you. I was just wondering why Jessica... Like, like what was the line you used to pick up Jessica I'm Alba? seeing a cappella right outside your back. You need the cops. You know what? <laughs> what you going to do now? <laughs> okay, <laughs> before we move on to Mailbag, we want to remind you guys that uh, Chris and I are hosting a very, very exciting event this Friday right here on Collider Video's YouTube channel. That would be the movie trivia schmodown and it ain't just another friday for the movie trivia schmodown christian well there you go it's a title match big title match you have the rising star classy clark wolf who has just been because of that picture murdering her competition <laughs> and then the uh, dan merle who has been flawless and dangerous. just yeah, really dangerous beat mark riley who seemed unbeatable and dan beat him so this is a battle of titans the two of them movie trivia titans the two of them are going at it on Friday, it'll be a good match. Uh, Schnepp, we ran around the table giving our predictions yesterday. You were not here. Who do you like in this matchup on Friday? Do you got Dangerous Dan Merle or Classy Clark Wolf? I got Hungry Like the Wolf. I mean, Clark <laughs> Wolf, she's going to Duran Duran this style, full on Rio dance around Dan Merle's <laughs> busted up dead body and chuck the rest of it out for bait. I think Merle's going home. Okay, so he's picking Clark Wolf in a landslide. And now we move on to mailbag. We do want to remind you guys at the end of the show, we're going to save some time for your live Twitter questions. So start tweeting right now at Collider Video and you guys can always email us your questions and we're happy to answer it either on Movie Talk or on our weekend show Mailbag. That email address is collidervideo at gmail.com. Ashley, what is up first in our mailbox? Mike Harper writes, hey Collider crew, with school starting back up, what was your favorite movie in high school? What was your taste in movies? Was your taste in movies a lot different than compared to today? Meaning has it evolved over time? I remember seeing Spider-Man 3 in theaters when I was a sophomore and thinking it was great today not so much thanks for answering my question and for the daily entertainment it's a uh, it's funny you bring that up because somebody right here on our staff that's behind the scenes also loves spider-man 3 in high school i won't say who it was yeah. but somebody here in this very room was a huge fan of spider-man 3 they thought venom was awesome Oops. and they asked my autograph the first time they met me um as far as high school movies go like i don't think my taste in movies has changed that much i've become appreciative of a wider range of genres than I would before. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was in high school and I saw the La La Land trailer, I'd be like, I've never seen that in a million years. But the artistic side of me can kick in at this old age that I'm at now and say, no, I do want to see that for those reasons. In high school, it was all about comedy to me, and there was nobody hotter on the planet at that time than Mr. Jim Carrey. So I took all those movies so seriously, had to see him opening weekend. I remember Liar Liar had a huge effect on me. And then I was still recovering 
from the phase that I was in in junior high when, for whatever reason, I just thought Pauly Shore movies were, were sure. pretty damn good. Because he started off, well, started off with Encino Man and Son-in-Law. Those were great movies. I saw them when I was, when I was in sixth grade, and uh, they worked at the time, and I believe that they still work today somewhat. In the Army now, jury duty, not so much. What about uh, Biodome? I never actually saw The Biodome was my app. Okay. I, when I saw Biodome coming out, I'm like, I think I'm off the Pauly train, Got and it. I'm onto this new Jim Carrey fella. John Schnapp, when you went to high school, what were your favorite movies? Back when they had the horse and buggies. Um, look, <laughs> you know, I'd say I, I looked it up. I was like, wow, Back to the Future. You got the Breakfast Club. Uh, you have uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. You had Brazil. You had Fright Night. Commando. I'm just reading off. This Dude. is 1985 when I was in high school. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh, I mean, so many different films. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, Life Force. A lot of them, some of them don't hold up. You know, like if you... Life Force was just, if you, you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Toby Hooper's Life Force. It's like this weird space vampire movie mm. with this incredible cast of like crazy all nude vampires walking around. So when you, if you know what I'm talking about, check out Life Force and uh, you won't regret it. Um, man, there's just so many uh, that came out that, that, that one year. And then uh, I'd have to even say like I go to 1984, the year before that. Children of the Corn, you have Ghostbusters, the original one. You have Dune. You got uh, Beverly Hills Cop. I mean, The Terminator, Indiana Jones of the Temple of Doom. I mean, the list is kind of endless. Bl the Coen Brothers' very first film, The Blood Simple, Once Upon a Time in America. Just a lot of really cool films came out that year. Uh, and I haven't had a problem rewatching them. Amadeus came out that, that year, and I've seen it many years later afterwards, and it's still fun to see Holchi run around and like play Amadeus. So, 1984, pretty sweet year in the world of cinema and in music. Christian, what That's do you right. got? Your favorite high school movies, and have your taste changed? They haven't changed, but it was—I mean, I—I I was watching. Um, it was funny. I, I would watch a lot of crime stuff back then. It was whether it be good—I mean, Goodfellas and Carlito's Way, Scarface. But then I watched—I watched The Doors like so many times. Oliver Stone's The Doors. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the movies that I really. <laughs> Where's Christian? He's in his room watching The Doors again. It <laughs> smells weird in there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, it, those, those are the ones that I remember the most. I mean, I remember my taste, but probably evolved a lot, in, you know, from the time when I was in like sixth grade and junior high to senior year, because I remember senior year, the two movies that were vying for the top spot at the Oscars were Saving Private Ryan right. and Shakespeare in Love. And obviously it was like a guy you're going to appreciate Saving Private Ryan more initially. But I remember seeing Shakespeare in Love with my family in the theater and being like, oh, this is a really good, pleasant movie. Should it have beat Saving Private Ryan for the Oscar? No. Should not have at all. Saving Private Ryan got robbed. Ashley Mova, you've been to high school and recently graduated. What <laughs> movies remind you of your high school years and have your taste um, in film changed? It hasn't changed at all, and that really makes me question who I am as a person. Oh. But um, my favorite movies in high school are my favorite movies still to this day, Saw and Mean Girls. And I hadn't seen Saw in theaters, but my friend made me watch it on DVD at home, and it was amazing i fell in love with it i just realized they missed a perfect opportunity to do a crossover between saw and mean girls yeah i know right dude yeah could you imagine jigsaw was like just kill them all play a game. yeah just That's take it. them they, well, they someone can up. still make it mean saw coming 2017 saw. yeah you know what song they should put in there what? bad boys bad boys <laughs> what, what you gonna, gonna do what, what you gonna, gonna do when they come for you <laughs> Not with that. How, how dare you S rat our song? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to live Twitter questions. Ashley, what is up first in the Twitter sphere today? Okay, Alan Reed writes favorite bromance in any movie. Favorite bromance in any movie. It's it, Initially, I'm going to go with the 21, 22 Jump Street. That's what's on my mind because it's you know so recently released in theaters. Bill and um, Ted's Excellent Adventure. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is Lethal a Weapon. great one. Lethal Weapon is a great one. Super bad. Uh, Super bad is really good. I like I like the chemistry between Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones in the first Men mm. in Black and the yeah. chemistry between Will Smith and Martin Lawrence in Bad Boys. That is an all-time great bromance. And I think you could throw Beverly Hills Cop sure. in that vein as well. Little Nick Nolte. How about Ghostbusters? Pretty damn good bromance yeah, in there, bromancing. too. Yeah, 48 Hours is another great one. So there's a lot of good bromance. Bromancing in the, the Stone? No. Oh. Mm. Well, Twins. <laughs> twins is a great one, yeah. yeah. What about uh, Schwarzenegger and like 800 other people in The Expendables? It's, <laughs> it's Man, all. It's bailing on this. <laughs> all right. What's our next question? Addison Lee writes What is your favorite monologue in a film? Oh, dude. I mean, the the one that everybody always talks about is that uh, is the Glenn 
uh, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, yeah, with yeah. The one sell. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael Douglas has a great one in Wall Street. Uh, I just caught Wolf of Wall Street on TV again this weekend, and uh, Leo DiCaprio as Jordan Belfort has so many great speeches mm. that he gives in there. Mel um, Gibson, Braveheart. No, oh, that rousing yeah, that speech. Spe yeah, because you, you always think like the big bombastic yeah. speeches, like like a pregame speech. The inches we need are all around the us. President's from speech in Independence Day. Bill Pullman right. in Independence Day, yeah. but, and, in, uh, and in Regurgence. Yeah, well, the, for me, for me, I think Pacino and Scent of the Woman, Scent of a Woman, also uh, at the at the in the court for sure. That's really good. Yeah, Pacino usually has some good ones. Okay, but if I'm going to give you guys one mic drop monologue, are right. you taking that one? I'm taking the Emperor from Return of the Jedi. Where he's like, your friends are di dying. <laughs> whatever. It's, it's fully operational. Whatever that whole speech is. I he's love got it. some good little, yeah. you know. I'm going to go send of a woman, yeah. I mean, okay. you watch that. You watch, watch the way he is tearing that down. Oh, that I got it. Roy Batty, end sequence of Blade Runner. Check it out. I I've will seen have to do that. fires off the coast of Orion. Okay. That entire speech. Sounds the great. The yeah. artist. was a good one. The Fartist? The, the Artist. Brian Fassane? There's a good one in The Artist. It's a silent film, dude. Oh, However, the one you picked before was Al Pacino. Correct. Who won an Oscar. Ha! I'm going to go with another Oscar winner. Robin Williams, Goodwill Hunting, sitting on the park bench Ooh. when he just bitch slaps Matt Damon's character. And nice. he's like, you don't know anything about nothing. It is such a great scene to watch not only Robin Williams deliver that monologue, but also watch how Matt Damon is reacting to what he's hearing. He's never had anybody talk to him like this. And it's Robin Williams actually getting inside that brilliant genius. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's one of my all time favorite okay. speeches. Ash, do you have a monologue that you love? Oh my God! On the spot. Um, ah, uh, you cannot uh, pick it. You cannot pick up. Mean say, girls are soft. Mean girls. When Gretchen Wiener stands up and she's saying <laughs> oh, her speech about bringing Caesar. up the Wiener. Yeah. We'll okay. <laughs> Who's Al next? It's not like how dirty this show got. Uh, What's sorry. our next question? Um, okay. Broken gumball machine writes. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> You should probably fix it if it's broken. <laughs> yeah. If it's broken, come on. You're right. Do you think there will be more nostalgic coming-of-age adventure movies since Could be. Stranger Things did so well? Uh, Al, <laughs> ha. Uh, I don't know. It might be uh, there. Might be some new ones coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to ring some more Pacino from that cloth. Right? And, uh, what was it called? Sing Bad Boys. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Uh, I would love to see more of that stuff. But the thing is, like, 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 there's been a lot of people and a lot of productions have tried to capture 80s nostalgia. They finally did it right with Stranger Things. So I'm sure you're going to see a lot of copycats that, once again, do not capture it as well as Stranger Things did. So I think you're going to see a lot of efforts. I'm not sure you're going to see anybody do it as well as what Stranger Things did on Netflix for a long, long time. How do you feel about that, Schnapp? Yeah, I hope they can. Yeah, I'd love to see some people like try to capture the 70s, you know, capture the 80s recapture the 90s just capture it all it's a brand new <laughs> game it's called pokemon <laughs> uh christian uh we heard from mr pacino do you think that we're gonna be we're gonna get a rash of these movies that try to go back to the 80s yes it's gonna happen and whether or not it's tv or or movies it is gonna be doing it yes and I, that was already in the works even before stranger things mm -hmm. but i think that people are gonna people always try to pick up on the wave the, yeah. the thing that was so special and unique about about stranger things is the fact that it actually captured what the 80s did. And, and so many shows and movies have tried to do it, and it just seems like it's a production that's trying to take place in the 80s, where it felt like you were watching the 80s. So it's hard to recapture that magic. I think people will try to do it, I just don't know if it'll happen. Well, also the Duffer brothers went into it, try, not just attempting to do it, but doing it. They had specifically set out all these different things, like we wanna recapture this kind of moment, or re, like kind of like, really like lay, pay homage to all these different films that was the whole idea behind right. Stranger Things so. right I mean it, technically Super 8 uh, it takes place in 1979 but that was the closest that I had right. seen to really capturing the essence but I think Stranger Things managed to do that even better mm -hmm. than what Super 8 did which is a movie I really really like alright Ash let's do a few more La Lunatica writes gender flipping flipped <laughs> gender flipped remakes good idea or marketing gimmick it, I, I think it's a case by case yeah. basis. I think if you were going to, whether you want to say remake or reboot, or even if they're going to continue the franchise with Ghostbusters, I think it was the right play to make them female and not male. I think sometimes it can work. I'm excited to see what they do with this Ocean's Eleven spinoff that's going to take place in the same universe mm -hmm. as the other Ocean's Eleven film. Um, but I think sometimes it can become a total gimmick, and that's the fear that you run into sometimes, where I know you want to try and be progressive, but if you're just gender swapping for the sake of doing it, it really comes off bad. And I think the audience is 
is wise enough to be able to detect which ones are genuine and which ones are just trying to grab a quick buck. How do you feel about it, Schnapp? Yeah, I think it'd be weird if Conan the Barbarian was a woman. You'd just be like, hey, look, it's Red Sonia. Just like, you know, there's different characters that fit these different bills. But I think, uh, you know, uh, gender swapping happens a lot with uh, non-franchise based films where you could just change the character in the script and it shouldn't actually matter whether it's a man or a woman you know race wise or anything you should be able to swap those kinds of things out and make the dynamics work christian i think yeah i agree case by case i think that sometimes i think it is gimmick and i think sometimes it's uh it's because they want to tell the right story and i and i like i've said when it came to ghostbusters i thought ghostbusters could have been Two different things. I think one, had they continued the lore and not rebooted the whole thing, it might have worked a little better. The tone might have shifted. It could have shifted the tone a little bit more. But I still think it may have served to maybe do two women, two men, and just make it that type of Ghostbusters. You didn't just need the all female cast. Um, but I don't certainly. I don't think that that's the reason why the movie didn't work. And I actually am in favor for the Ocean's. 13, 14, 15, whatever is the the continuation of the lore with a female cast because they are going to kind of continue what Danny Ocean and the crew did before them. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just a matter of how they do it. All right, let's do two more Twitter questions and call it a day. Okay, Salim Q writes, what are some movie crossovers that you want to see happen? Oh, uh, movie crossovers that we want to see happen. Like, I'm on board with if they want to try the Men in Black 22 jump I know not everybody's on board with that. So I think I'm pretty open to movie crossovers because I think that it's not going to ruin the war of the previous one. There was something very intriguing about if they were going to do, we go back to Ghostbusters, but if you're going to do Ghostbusters and put that in another universe, like something a little more serious going on and make it more of a horror movie, I would like to see something like that. I'm also a big fan of if they wanted to try to do two actors Action franchises crossing over like if you did Mission Impossible and Jason Bourne how yeah. awesome would that be how epic would that be it would never happen in a million years but really when you break it down who wins in a fight between Ethan Hunt and his team and Jason Bourne being on his own I think my money's got to be on the Mission Impossible gang right Christian uh, I don't know at this point yeah because they have a better movie right now so, I mean, the last movie's better than the last movie. You know, so Jason Bourne, maybe it's easier to hide if you're just one guy, but I can't imagine that Jason Bourne is willing to go to the yeah. links that Tom Cruise is. Maybe. Uh, but that that's one that could be interesting. Maybe even James Bond and Mission Impossible could be interesting mm-hmm. for I'm going sure. With, uh, Breakfast Club. I didn't Repo finish. Man. No, <laughs> go ahead. I'm just kidding. Whoa, 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 <laughs> hey, whoa. Wait, Mark's about to have a temper tantrum. Should we cut short before <laughs> you close? Hey, baby <laughs> doll, what's oh, going on? on? I want to bring up a song. Yeah. Oh, ah. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> Kristen, why don't you go ahead? No, I'm done. It doesn't matter what <laughs> you're going to say. <laughs> I don't even know. I got nothing. No, no, I like your idea. You oh. had Breakfast Club and something. <laughs> it was Breakfast Club and the um, Repo Man. Oh. Do like combo like that. Or I was like on this Rambo. 80s kick. Yeah, you got Bachelor Party and The Last Starfighter. Just, you know, make a bunch of drunk dudes have to go up in space and fight an armada. Okay. That Rambo sounds, and uh, John McClane. Rambo and John McClane. I uh, like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about 80s, 70s, 60s. I don't know that John McClane... Look, I, Die Hard's the best action movie of all time. And I love the first three Die Hard movies to death. I don't right. know that John McClane can hang with Rambo. Like, I don't... Uh, right. John McClane is scrappy. He could do mm. some spy stuff. But Rambo is just, like, so epic. The way he just shoots people. He he's merciless. And John yeah, McClane, true. I just don't know that they live in real. the same world. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Right. I'm going to have to give the red light to your movie. Paris, Texas, and Police Academy. With the cops theme. That's right. <laughs> I'm not doing it again. Oh. I strained my throat. All right, let's do one more Twitter question and get the hell out of here, Ashley. Oh, right. I can't even say this name. Um, <laughs> fart booty, right? Wow. Um, wow. You keep it classy, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm somebody who wants to get my opinion out in the world. What should my handle be? My name? Oh, I got a better one. Fart ass. Yeah. Yeah. Great name. Fart yep. booty. Fart booty in the <laughs> house. <laughs> Fart Boutte, if hey, you like Buckaroo Bonsai. Maybe Fart Got Booty a fart has a great a question booty. for us. Let's keep an open mind. Oh my DP God. Nelson asks. Oh, okay. He writes, has a movie trailer ever made you cry? Made me fart. Yeah. <laughs> it made me gas yeah. real loud. Mad Steel, I think, made us all Mad, fart. Mad Steel. Mad <laughs> Steel made me very farty. Who are you? I don't know that I've ever gotten emotional watching a trailer unless it's something that harkens back to my childhood and the thing that I love more than anything else in the world of film, and that would be Star Wars. There's a famous picture of Christian and I weeping watching the Chewy We're Home trailer yep. from episode. I don't know.
know that, that I ever cried at another Star Wars trailer. I might have had a single tear go when I saw Darth Vader a couple weeks ago when I did the Rogue One reaction, mm -hmm. but um, it will happen with Star Wars. I don't know that there's another franchise that could like come back in such a big way like The Force Awakens did yeah. to where I would be moved to tears just by seeing the trailer um, maybe King Kong versus Godzilla might yeah, right. send me into like a weird emotional Godzilla, dizzy. we're home. Yeah. Can you think of anything that else no, that would make you honestly, emotional? Honestly, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. The Star Wars trailer just sitting in my office by myself when I saw that yeah. and Chewie, we're home, got me teary. I was like, literally, because it hit all those nostalgic moments. So. That was one of them. But that's the like, like arguably the greatest movie franchise of all time with two of the most iconic characters in film history coming back. We never thought we would get the chance to see that happen again, and it did. Christian, is there any way that another trailer... It's almost harder for it to do it now because yeah. the bar's been set so right. high by Force Awakens. Yeah, I mean, and it was also because we were at Star Wars Celebration with thousands of fans, and you felt the emotion in the room. So I'm it just was, saying I was by myself, and I got emotional. I think yeah, I, well, I, I would have lost it. It's an emotional it. trailer. I, I I'm just saying, though, just and just have that times ten. Sure. Being in that room, I agree with you that you sit, it doesn't matter where you are. You, it's an emotional trailer, but just imagine with thousands of fans in that arena watching it on the big screen. J.J. Abrams throws it up. It was like something I it, like we'll never experience again. Right. But having said that, I mean, like, like we're going to Star Wars Celebration in Orlando next year, and if there's some Episode Eight footage where you maybe get a guy named Luke Skywalker, maybe turns on a green lightsaber again, it's uh, <laughs> it's making me emotional just thinking about it. And that is all the time we have for today's episode of Collider Movie Talk. Huge thank you to everybody. Both both behind the scenes and the panel up front with me. First of all, my lawyer in all cases, Miss Wendy Lee, where can everybody find you online? You can find me defending Mark Ellis to the death Ooh. and on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. Over here is John Schnepp. Where can the kids find you? You can find me at Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. And this coming weekend at the Palm Springs Comic Con. It's their first big Comic Con. I'll be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Come check it out. I recommend the Applebee's in Palm Springs, one of the best in the entire <laughs> country. Check that out Christian too. Harloff, where can the kids find you? Fart booty. We're home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or you can find me on Jedi Council this Thursday, and you can also find me at Christian Harloff off Twitter and Instagram. Ashley Mova, how about yourself? Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. Happy Taco Tuesday, indeed, to everybody out there. Reminder, coming up later on today is going to be Collider Nightmares, hosted <laughs> by John Schnepp's pick for beating Dan Merle, Classy Clark. Clark Wolf. Wolf. Are you on the panel today? I'm on the panel John today. Schnepp is going to be there, too. Mark Riley, Perry Nemeroff, the whole gang is going to be back for Collider Nightmares later on today. Make sure you all check out amctheaters.com. That's where you go for all the latest box office and showtime ticket information. Bookmark Collider. Collider.com. That's where we go for a lot of the scoops. We bring you guys each and every day. And of course, subscribe right here, Collider Video on YouTube. My name is merely Mark Ellis. You guys can find me on Twitter, maybe having a tantrum at Mark Ellis Live. And I'll be at the world famous comedy store on Sunset Strip in Southern California this Friday and Saturday. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.